Welcome to the biology lesson on kingdom plantae and animalia. In this lesson, you will learn about Pteridophyta, Gymnospermae, Angiospermae and finally animal kingdom. Today, we are going to explore kingdom plantae and discover the main divisions of kingdom plantae. Imagine a kingdom divided into three main realms, each with its own unique characteristics. In the first realm, we have the mighty Bryophyta. These incredible plants include mosses and liverworts. They may be small in size, but they play a crucial role in nature. Now, let's move on to the second realm called Pteridophyta. This realm is home to some enchanting plants like ferns and horsetails. And finally, we arrive at the third and most diverse realm of all, the Spermatophyta. These are boosting a wide variety of plants we commonly encounter. Within the Spermatophyta, we find an interesting subgroup known as Gymnosperms. The name itself tells us something unique about them. Gymno means naked and Sperma means seed. Now, let's uncover the characteristics of these fascinating Gymnosperms. They are hardy plants adapted to survive in challenging environments. Unlike other plants, they do not have flowers or fruits. Some common examples of gymnosperms include towering pine trees, ancient cycads, and the lovely ginkgo biloba tree, known for its fan-shaped leaves. Now, let's compare the two phases of bryophytes, the gametophytic and sporophytic phases. In the gametophytic phase, bryophytes produce male and female reproductive structures called gametangia. These structures release specialized cells called gametes, which are essential for sexual reproduction. In the sporophytic phase, the fertilized egg develops into a sporophyte, which is attached to the gametophyte. The sporophyte produces spores, which are vital for dispersal and the continuation of the life cycle. The kingdom plantae includes the plants. They provide us with oxygen, food, and so much more. Now, let's start by getting to know one of the plant groups out there, the angiosperms. Picture this, a beautiful flower blooming in a garden. That's a typical flowering plant, my friends. They are like nature's fashionistas, flaunting their vibrant petals to attract pollinators like bees and butterflies. Angiosperms have enclosed seeds, like those found in fruits, while gymnosperms have naked seeds, like those on a pine cone. It's like a plant's way of protecting its precious offspring. Now, let's explore some fascinating plant families. Our first stop is the Fabaceae family, also known as the pea family. This family includes all those delicious pulses we love, like lentils, chickpeas, and beans. Imagine a hearty ball of lentil soup or a plate of mouth-watering rajma curry. These plants not only satisfy our taste buds, but also enrich the soil with nitrogen through a magical process called nitrogen fixation. Next up, we have the Malvisi family, also known as the China Rose family. They bring a pop of color to our gardens with their vibrant blooms. Some plants in this family, like the marshmallow plant, have medicinal properties. Our next plant family is the Liliaceae family, also known as the Lily family. Take a look at the aloe vera plant, for example. It belongs to the Liliaceae family and has remarkable healing properties. Its gel can soothe burns and moisturize our skin. Finally, let's explore the Posi family, also known as the grass family. The Posi family includes our beloved cereals like wheat, rice, and corn. Without them, we wouldn't have our morning ball of cereal or our tasty bread. Let's talk about the kingdom Animalia. Animals come in all shapes and sizes, but they share some general features that help us classify them. Animals are organized beings, they have cells, tissues, organs, and systems that work together to keep them alive and kicking. Next, let's talk about symmetry. Some animals, like butterflies and humans, have a special kind of balance in their bodies. It's like having a mirror image down the middle. 
Animals have amazing layers that develop into different body parts which begins with the embryonic layers namely ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And last but not least, the notochord. Some animals have this flexible rod-like structure that supports their bodies. Now, let's move on to the major phyla included in Kingdom Animalia. Our first stop is phylum Porifera, which includes sponges. They are the simplest multicellular animals. Next up is phylum Cynidalia, home to fascinating creatures like hydroids, jellyfish, sea anemones, and corals. These animals have tentacles armed with special stinging cells. Moving on, we have phylum Platyhelminths, also known as flatworms. They may look flat, but they have some surprising abilities. Some can even regenerate lost body parts. Let's explore phylum Askelminths, specifically class Nematoda. These creatures are commonly known as nematodes or roundworms. They are everywhere, from soil to water, and even inside our bodies. Next is phylum Anelida, home to the earthworms. They play a vital role in our ecosystem. They are like the recyclers of the soil. In phylum Arthropoda, you'll encounter amazing creatures like crabs, scorpions, insects, and spiders. Arthropods are further divided into four subphyla, Crustacea, Myriopoda, Insecta, and Arachnida. Each group has its own remarkable characteristics and countless members to explore. Let's move on to the amazing phylum Mollusca. This phylum includes a variety of fascinating animals like squids, snails, and oysters. Some squids can change colors to camouflage themselves from predators. Moving on to the mesmerizing phylum Echinodermata. This phylum is home to incredible creatures like starfish and sea urchins. They have a unique feature called a water vascular system, which helps them move and capture food. Let's learn about the phylum Caudata, which includes some of our closest animal relatives. This phylum is divided into three subphyla, Eurocordata, Cephalocordata, and Vertebrata. We belong to the subphylum Vertebrata because we have a backbone. Within the subphylum Vertebrata, we have some remarkable classes. Take class Reptilia, for example. There are those cool crawling creatures with scales, like snakes and lizards. They lay eggs on land. And let's not forget our feathered friends, class Aves. Birds are incredible creatures with wings that allow them to fly gracefully through the sky. From soaring eagles to colorful parrots, they never fail to amaze us. Lastly, we have class Mammalia, to which we humans belong. Mammals have unique features like mammary glands that produce milk, and most importantly, we are warm-blooded. Mammals regulate their body temperature, making them adaptable to different environments. That concludes our lesson. For additional information on this lesson, please look at the content below the video in the online course. To get a list of the important questions and their answers for this lesson, please refer to the guidebook by our publications provided to you with this course for free. It shows you a list of all the questions that have the highest chance of coming in your next exams based on research carried out on previous year question papers. All the best! and I will see you in the next lesson.